Hey, what's up everybody? Mark McKinnon here. This is video two of a series about how to create a character for Bassem 4th edition. So the book's out. You might have watched video one about the first session, session zero, which will really help you get an idea how to start creating a character collectively. And now we're going to get into chapter three, and this is about templates. So that's on page 31 you're going to go into. So there's three different types of templates. The first one is size templates. And this only applies if your character is going to be anything other than medium size. So think, think human size with plus or minus a small amount. So if you want to play uh, maybe a, a halfling or a pixie, someone really small, or maybe a, a gargantuan hulk. If you're going to play anything other than a human size, you're going to want to choose a size template. With all aspects of the template, you don't need to understand the mechanistic aspects of them. I mean, if you want to read ahead in the book and get a feel for it, great. But the templates were done in section three before everything else in character creation. And that's designed perfectly um, because people who are new, they might need a little bit of handholding. And it's, you know, Bessem can be kind of daunting if you're first time approaching it. And so we wanted to make sure we put the templates early. And so even if you don't understand anything that it says about, you know, what armor ratings are or what are the benefits or detriments of a height multiplier or maybe lifting capacity, you don't have to understand that. Just if you are going to play anything other than human size, you want to choose a size template, either smaller or bigger. The majority of this section in the chapter three is dedicated to the two different types of templates that are going to be your race templates or your class templates. Your race are you know, pretty straightforward. Your dwarves, your elves, your, your fairies or satyrs or, or woolies, whatever you have that's considered more of a, of a race or a species. We have 25 examples of race templates in the best and fourth edition, but of course you're free to create your own as well. After the template section for races, we get into class templates. Now classes aren't te classes like Dungeons and Dragons. These are classes or think of them are either occupations. Uh, for example, it could be uh, like a ninja uh, or a pet monster trainer or something closer to a calling. So you might have something that's, um, for example, like a, like a magical girl. So that's not really a job. It's just a calling that you have. Uh, a martial artist isn't even a job or a, a calling. It's more just kind of what you do. And so that's what classes are. Races are very straightforward. They're about species, where the classes are about the things that the character does. And so throughout this chapter, 25 on the races and 25 on the classes, you're going to be able to select something that gives you a bit of a framework of what your character is going to be. Now, it's not everything you need to do about your character, but it's a starting point. And of course, one of the things you need to keep in mind, even if you don't understand the system, are the point values of these. And that goes back to the collective creation that we had in session zero. So that's the previous video. It talks about the point level. So if you only have 100 points to spend, you can't take a class template plus a race template, maybe plus a size template, if it's going to add up to, say, 150 points, if you only have 150 points, uh, only have 100 points to spend. And so you do have to look at the points that are involved with that, but it's not the the full descriptions are not kind of what's important about that. So just to quickly give you a, a brief rundown of these. So you're going to have all the different attributes, uh, special abilities that the character does, as well as some defects. And these are detriments that the character has, uh, drawbacks that affect the character. And we give the level of them as well as the number of points associated with them to, to arrive at a total point value for the templates. Again, don't worry about the details. If you know them, wonderful. If you don't, you'll find out about those later when we get to chapter five. But right now, it's just going through and, and getting ideas of what kind of templates would you want? What would you want to see? You could even choose more than two templates. Um, maybe race is a little difficult to, to choose two races. Uh, if you're a robot and uh, an Azrai at the same time, that might be a little difficult. But certainly with the class templates, you can choose two. So you could be an idol and a general, or maybe you can be a, an exorcist and a demon hunter, which would be an interesting combination. As long as you have the points for it, you can certainly combine them in very interesting ways. And when you combine your class template plus your race template, when you add those together, all of the uh, attributes are going to be added together as well. So if you are with one class template that has plus one level in a particular attribute and you add together a race template that has two attributes in that level, um, uh, levels in that attribute, you're going to end up getting a total of three levels. So you, anything you take from your race, you're going to add it to your class and then also add it to your size if that plays into the factor. And then that's going to give you your baseline that you're starting from. 
And you're going to be taking what you have here of your base, and then you're going to be refining it later with stats, which are kind of your core capabilities, and more attributes and defects later on. This here is not the end-all be-all. You do not need to choose a race or a class. You can make up your own, or you can just say, I don't want to choose any of these, and that's fine as well. But they're there to give you ideas when you're looking through to say, oh, okay, I, I can see how that race template is constructed. I can see some of the details that they're looking for, and that'll give you ideas if you want to create your own or if that you want to have a little bit more customization. So when you're first starting out, if this is your first time with BESA, maybe your, your group's new, highly recommend that you do choose one race and one class. Even if it's not exactly what you want to play, you're probably not going to be jumping in and starting a campaign that's going to last for, you know, say a year or two right off the bat. But it'll give you a really good foundation to use these, and which is why in third edition we put the templates at the end of the character creation section as almost like an afterthought. But we did fourth edition, and we thought it was really important to pull it right to the beginning at the front because that's going to be your foundation that you're going to choose if you are unfamiliar with the game, you want to choose your race and your class to start. Uh, and that's familiar with a, a lot of other role-playing games as well. You want to choose your foundational aspects and then you want to refine them later. So chapter three is all about combining those templates. And then in the next section, in the next video, we're going to get into doing more about stats with his chapter four. All right, so thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.